scandal always trumps the malfeasance in office scandal. Because, of course, this is America. Yeah. We can understand grabbing more than we can understand a, a policy on Syria. You know? What do you think would happen? And I know it's impossible to figure this out. But if Ted Cruz were the nominee, or Jeb Bush were the nominee, or Marco Rubio was the nominee, and all of these emails were coming out, do you think it would be... First of all, let me just say, I think that if any of them were the candidate and that Access Hollywood bus tape came out, it would be a heck of a lot worse. Oh, they, they, they would be over. They would be over. They would be totally over. Yeah. But... It, it, the Clinton campaign against them wouldn't be based on their relationship with women. Correct. If it was Ted Cruz, if Ted Cruz was the Republican nominee, it would all be about his positions on the social issues. Right. Which are abhorrent to anyone under 40. Right. The Kim Davis Association, the uh, religious affiliation. Women's reproductive, right? Yes. Yes. And, and so he would be malathion to a huge chunk of the public that maybe are, they're voting for Trump now. If it was uh, Marco Rubio, you could probably do the same thing. Maybe he's not as hardcore as right. Ted Cruz on the social issues. A lot of people don't think that Trump even has the social issues of it. No, he's so, a secular nominee. Right. So that's why you almost have to go there with Trump. Right. Because you can't paint him as the scary guy that's going to go in there and bash gays. Right, yeah. Because that's just, that's not Trump. That's not who he is. Right. So they had to go in a different direction with him. They were hoping, though, that Mike Pence would bridge that gap. That's what they were hoping. That Mike Pence was the guy that got along with conservatives, that has their same values, and that he would be this bridge between evangelicals, Mormons, you know, that religious right to Trump that may not have been on board with Trump. And he did a very good job during the vice presidential debate. Yes. Yeah, um, that's just been overshadowed by all this stuff. But it, yeah, I mean, when you're you want evangelical voters, it's hard to you know. Talk the about. Mormons in particular, I think the Mormons are a bigger problem than the evangelicals. The evangelicals are going to vote for them, but the Mormons. I mean, you see those numbers in Utah. Yeah. And Arizona and Nevada. Why do you think the Mormons are in more trouble? Because, and I grew up in a very Mormon area. Oh. Mormons practice what they preach, unlike a lot of other religions. That is true. So when they they're not supposed to drink caffeine. They, they would No. Oh. They would not drink caffeine. Uh, we'd be at lunch, and they'd have the caffeine-free Cokes, or, you know, they'd be drinking uh, water or whatever. They would not drink the Coca-Cola. And their parents weren't there, and they could do whatever they want. And they, they, they stuck to the rules. I remember they used to have um, some kind of, like, seminary class that would be before our first period at the church. Mm-hmm. And virtually all of them went. And we started school pretty early. We started school at like 7 a.m. And they had a class that was on from like 6 to 6.30. And they would all go to that. And it was treated, because a lot of them went to BYU or, or the Mormon universities, it was treated like a, a real class by those universities. And they, they really practice what they preach. And they don't like that kind of language. They don't like that kind of talk. And so I think that would really bother them. Mm. Ultimately, they're going to vote for him, but I think it does bother him. Let's go to Bob in Pasadena. Bob.